So this is our uh, retail space here. It's about 90% set up. We're starting to finish. Um, everything in here is kiln dry. Uh, we do direct to furniture maker uh, sales. We do sales to the public. And in addition to that, like we will walk through a project with a customer and make something like this table here um, out of the wood that we have. We can customize to any specifications that people are looking for. Yeah, we try to display all this stuff and uh, make it so that it's easy to walk through and not intimidating and any questions people have, we try to answer. Um, yeah, and then we can go into the back here and we'll go into the process room. In this room here is where we're gonna take our raw material and process um, either for retail or for uh, projects. We're gonna get everything kind of S4S, or we're gonna cut to size and uh, you know, rough material, or take the material from rough into more of a finished product. And then back here, we're gonna take it back here for the finished product. We have our shop dog back here. So back here, put all those, uh, our furniture work back here. And we're gonna take all that material that we've processed once we've talked to the customer and worked on a project and we're going to put it together and start prepping it for finish. Yeah. Lots of sanding. Yeah, lots of sanding. <laughs> this maple, it's kind of an interesting story. We had a customer that wanted a custom milling job uh, up near Cape Horn, Washington. And I drove out did an on-site like consult for it, consult for it. And, um, you know, ended up not really being something that was gonna work for everybody. Um, just, you know, it wasn't gonna work out. And so I was driving back and I just like looked over on the right and there's just this mountain of maple logs sitting there. And I could see a chainsaw and a couple pieces cut into firewood. And I was just like, oh, that can't happen, you know? So I stopped and I left a note for the person. And I was like, hey, you know, if you don't wanna cut that all up into firewood, we'd gladly, you know, we can do some sort of barter for it. And um, contacted me, came out, super nice guy. Chatted about it, he showed me his property, talked about all the trees on there and the trees, his family property and like all the stuff. And uh, you know, just came to agreement. We, we picked up his logs and then we're bringing back to him and his family's home pieces of furniture from those that wood itself. So he's gonna end up with these really cool pieces of furniture and we have material for us to work on projects and everybody's just you know, happy and, and it works out, so. Yeah. I'm stop out and talk to the Sawyer. This portion out here is our air drying and milling area. Ah! Yeah, this is uh, still a work in progress. It's taking us a little while to get this infrastructure together, but this is our air drying portion of this. Uh, we want to eventually want to have everything covered so it's out of the sun and out, uh, out of the rain. It gets nice airflow so that we can get like a really even, nice uh, air dry and everything so the material stays nice. Um, over here we got, uh, we're actually stacking this uh, job right here. It's a, a dog tree we cut up for a customer in Portland. Um, and they're going to have it turned into some desks and stuff like that for desks and mantel pieces and some end tables and stuff like that for the family of the property. We're doing some custom decking for a, a tree house. One of those big fancy tree houses you see on the TV shows. Oh yeah? Yeah. We're doing a massive amount of like, this is going to be stair treads. I mean, that's the decking material as well. Wood Miser LT40 for our, mostly for our dimensional stuff and some of our um, slabs. But then we also have a Grandberg, like 84 inch uh, Alaska mill. Chainsaw mill? Yeah, yeah. chainsaw mill. So we'll run for our larger projects. How do you like both of those? Good. Yeah. yeah. The Grandberg is awesome because it gives us like an affordable way to cut larger logs, uh, which is really great. Um, yeah, you know, can be a little labor intensive, but it is, uh, you know, gets the job done. And then uh, no problems with the uh, wood miser. Been running it for, you know, five years now and uh, really haven't any issues. And cuts nice, so yeah. And then back behind here, we actually, sorry, we had the, those are our, our Nile DH kilns. Oh, you want to show me those? 
sure. Heard a lot of people getting into the Nile kilns recently. Yeah, I uh, ran a bunch of them prior to this operation, and uh, it was served me right. And then we thought about getting into some like uh, air vac kilns, but these were a little more cost effective and a little less expensive to run. Do you know what they cost you to run in a month? I'm not entirely sure, but I'd estimate somewhere between like six and eight hundred a month. So it does dry a little slower. We put this full rail system in. We can pull the entire kiln load out at once. So how long does it take a charge to dry? Uh, four to six weeks. This cool. depends on uh, how dry it is coming in, really. And then, you know, the species of wood. Yeah. Some are a little easier to work with than others. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you can get a fair amount in there at a time. Yeah, 4,000 board feet per, okay. per load. Um, Probably a little more, honestly. We get it stacked, right? And you come back in here with the stack probe while it's in there, and you uh, measure it or you pull it out. Pull it out. The kill itself has moisture probes, oh. like pin probes. Yeah. So we'll run based off of that. Then once those are reading about where we want it to be, we'll pull the entire load out and then go through and check everything with the probe 